Let's begin. Hey there, scary story fanatics. Welcome back to Cleaving Thought from Home with your host, Sociopathic. It's time we get back on the road with Shiloh and find out where her path is leading. So, settle in by those monitor screens and get ready for the story you didn't know you needed. The Chronicles of Shiloh, The Untold Story, Part 3, The Family. Okay, we're all set. Here's your key. And I made sure the rooms were adjoining in case there's some kind of emergency. Shiloh knew that the man was excited and was having a hard time keeping his green enthusiasm in check. But there wouldn't be any late night emergencies and his observable ineptitude begged her to ask the question that lingered on her mind. Okay, and what name did you place the bill under? Shiloh asked inquisitively taking her room key. Well, you said not to use your name, so I put it under Bruce, the man told her with a smile. Shiloh thought about the credit card on her person, under a name not his or her own, but of some made-up person. She knew the importance of anonymity, something that she learned once from experience, when a werewolf that she'd come hunting came looking for her instead in broad daylight concealed by the guise of a normal human without the added element of lycanthropy. However, Shiloh also recognized that, yes, this was something that she learned through experience, cemented by causing herself to fall into an ordeal, surviving it, and learning from it. She knew she couldn't keep Huck from danger if he was going to insist on learning the ropes, but she hoped upon hope that she was making the right decision in allowing him to do so, and possibly fail to survive said scenario. Okay, but listen, Huck, you can't keep dropping your real name. I'm glad you've stopped using mine, but you have to be mindful of yourself as well. What if someone gets hurt while we're hunting these things, even if it's not our fault? What if the cops start sniffing around and catch a lead that leads them into our direction? The last thing you want is anything solid trying to lead you to any of this. Trust me, there's three states I still have to be careful stepping into. Shiloh said, as she recounted, and although she wanted to say four states, Pennsylvania wasn't among them. Shiloh avoided that state because of all it held for her, implication, trauma, and otherwise. Oh, okay. Sorry, Shiloh. I can't go back in and change it now, then, right? Huck asked. Shiloh wanted to place her head in her palm and shake her skull from side to side, but instead, she simply smiled at her new friend and responded. No, you can't. Wouldn't matter now, but don't worry about it. We'll be extra careful just trying to keep it moving forward. Huck nodded and his demeanor lifted once again from that of a chastised child to that of one of full of hope and enthusiasm again. With Huck's help, Shiloh unloaded the car and brought everything into the adjoining rooms. They had a plan, and there was much to go over. Okay, want to run this by me again, Huck said, wanting to hear the plan one more time before they headed out. Well, it's been three months since they killed that little girl and got away. I've been tracking them in the northwest, and we know that they left bodies there just outside of town, Shiloh said pointing to a spot on a map. From the places they've stopped, the victims they've taken, and the frequency we've deduced, it's likely they're going to hit up someplace around here, likely fueling to head back out of town again. There's only one thing, Huck. Shiloh finished. Yeah? What's that? Doesn't seem like they've settled in one place for too long, always holding up somewhere until we're just on their trail. And then, they up and split, and we follow. Doesn't that mean you've just gotten really good at this? Well, that I am and that it does, but that's not what I'm afraid of. 
Vamps tend to settle down someplace near a steady food supply where no one will notice their activities. This nest has been moved in and out of prime spots along the way. If I'm right, they know that we've been following them. Well, that's good though, isn't it? That means we've got them on the run. I don't think so. I think when we do meet up at this nest, it's going to be failing us right into a trap. Shiloh explained. Well, I guess we're just going to have to keep on our toes and plan ahead ourselves. Huck suggested. Yeah, well, I think maybe you should sit this one out tonight, Huck. I don't need you getting hurt out there. You're still really new at this end. Shiloh started, but Huck cut her off. Hold up a second, Shiloh. No offense, but I'm a big enough boy to make my own decisions. And besides, I still have yet to see the proof in this vampire pudding. So far, it seems we've been chasing either some psychomaniac or a group of them. I know you say they're vampires, and I'm inclined to take your word for it, but... But you're still a bit skeptical, yeah, I get that. Doesn't mean you can't get hurt by what you don't believe in. Shiloh insisted. Okay, touche. But you're less than half the size that I am. And like I said, I can make my own decisions. Whether they're supernatural, blood-sucking freaks, or just your average run-of-the-mill psychopath, you could use my help. And you know I'm right. Huck proposed. Shiloh thought for a moment. She loved Raybob like Kim, and she couldn't forgive herself if something happened to his little brother, no matter how big he was. But she also felt like his presence, his insistence on being in her life, almost felt like Raybob was somehow still there for her, sending his brother to help her and to keep her safe. Shiloh knew that she would have to be the one keeping others safe, but she also knew that Huck was right. She needed help, and skeptical or not, he was willing to give it. Shiloh and Huck pulled into a desolate gas station on a back road, miles from any other signs of civilization. The worn sign indicated the place did indeed have a name, only now the letters had faded and worn away without repair, leaving the only legible sign about the building reading, Last Chance Gas. I'm going to go fuel up and grab a pack of cigars for the road while you pump the gas. You want anything? Huck said. No, I think I'm okay for now. Are you sure? We've been riding the cushiony insides of your pickup all day, and we haven't happened on a trail of nothing. Huck reminded her. Shiloh looked off toward the horizon. The sun was now completely set, yet the sky still retained a tinge of a reddish purple hue. Yeah, I'm fine. We should just likely head back anyway. They'll be on the move by now. Shiloh reasoned. Huck shrugged his large shoulders and sauntered into the gas station. Shiloh finished pumping when the nozzle clicked, signaling that the tank was full. She thought for a bit on the way that Huck spoke, and how he reminded her so much of her friend Raybob. Perhaps it was best that they hadn't found anything tonight. Huck was still as inexperienced at hunting monsters as anyone could be, and Shiloh was too invested in his continued existence to let anything happen to him. Shiloh pulled her wallet from her back pocket as she entered the gas station. Inside, Shiloh stood behind Huck as he awaited the cashier to ring up the backwood cigars that he intended to buy. When done, Huck stepped aside and waited for Shiloh as she purchased her gas. Anything else I could do for you, miss? The clerk asked. The kid couldn't have been any older than 22, and yet the clerk smiled at Shiloh as if he were interested in her. Shiloh understood that she still looked good for her age, but she had no interest in finding love, especially not with someone who was, until recently, a high schooler. As Shiloh shook her head side to side and handed the clerk the money for gas, a loud engine from what was sure to be an old vehicle could be heard rolling into place outside. Thinking nothing of it, Shiloh thanked the clerk and turned to leave with Huck, but was absolutely surprised by what she saw come walking in through the door. The thing looked at her as if to say hello, but smirked at Shiloh instead, his meaning the same. 
called you as soon as she arrived. He didn't say anything about a big fumbling oath, though. The clerk spoke up from behind her, and Huck both, causing Huck to turn around and look at him as if to say, Excuse me? But Huck opted to say nothing, knowing he was clearly outmatched by the big man that had just walked in and the lackeys that followed him behind him. Shiloh didn't turn at all and didn't make eye contact with the mother, grandmother, teenage boy, or twin children that walked in behind the man. I see you brought the whole family. That was a pretty stupid move, don't you say? Shiloh sneered confidently. The large, handsome, yet ageless man simply chuckled to himself. We knew that you were following us, and frankly, all this cat and mouse shit has made us very, very hungry. Leading you here was as easy as I thought it would be. Can I eat the big one? He looks big enough to feed everyone, the little girl asked, the patriarch of the group. But before he could even answer, the clerk picked up a wooden bat from behind the counter and hit Huck over the back of his head with it. The large man dropped to the floor like a heavy sack of flour. Why you- Shiloh yelled turning towards the clerk to rush him, but she was stopped by the teenage vampire gripping her by the shoulders from behind. The clerk smiled at Shiloh, revealing his fangs within, letting her know that he had been turned as well. What? Just offering us up with nothing for yourself? Shiloh asked. The clerk simply smiled and pointed down to his feet behind the counter. Although she was held in place, Shiloh was able to crane her neck to see at least part of what he was pointing at. When she saw the mostly naked young man, lifeless and covered in blood behind the counter, she understood. Oh, I see. They let you have the clerk all to yourself, and you help set us up, right? Shiloh asked, before turning her head towards the lead vampire once more. Had to fortify your manpower, I see. Well, after you killed off several of my blood kin a few months back, everyone in the family serves a purpose, and our ranks need to be replenished. Ooh, uh, let me have first bite, the teenager said, stepping in towards Shiloh, getting a laugh from the tall monster. Well, I suppose since... The head vampire began to say, ready to hand over Shiloh, but was interrupted by the sound of screeching tires coming to a halt outside. Who the hell is all the way out here getting gas at this hour? The mother vampire inquired. Don't know, but it looks like the dessert has just arrived. Hey, Jimbo, since you're new to the pack, you get to stay behind and watch these two. We're gonna go snag ourselves seconds. The leader of the monster family said, taking hold of Shiloh long enough to hand her over to the clerk's clutches. Shiloh struggled to get free, her arms held behind her back, but the creature was just too strong. Before she could hope to make a move to stop any of them, the six vampires walked back out the door of the convenience store with the intentions of harassing and victimizing the driver of whoever had just pulled up outside in an eye-catching, dark teal, 1979 Ford Torino Cobra. Before Shiloh could move a muscle, the clerk simply threw her against the nearest wall, hard, and then jumped on her. Shiloh tried to reach for her silver-coated blade hidden within her jacket, but the monster was on her before she could have a chance, causing her to direct her attention at holding off the thing's snapping jaws full of large teeth. The monster was much stronger than she was, and she was out of options. Shiloh was strong, but not strong enough to hold off the beast for long. The fangs got closer with each snap as the monster lurched its head forward, desperately trying to take a bite. Shiloh was so focused on trying to keep the monster at bay, she didn't see the man standing behind him. Not until that man clobbered the fake clerk over the head with a fire extinguisher. The monster didn't even flinch and spun around to face the person that Shiloh now saw standing over her. It was Huck. The beast snarled menacingly at Huck, but before he could move in his direction, Shiloh quickly plunged her blade into the thing's chest. The creature hissed and screamed before falling back onto the floor, allowing Shiloh to climb to her feet. You just killed that guy, Huck said in disbelief. He was trying to kill me, and besides, that's not a guy. Look, Shiloh said, pointing at the corpse on the floor. Just then, the man's body burst into flames and burned to nothing but ashes 
in an extremely quick manner, like he was made out of magnesium. What? What the? Huck said. But Shiloh cut him off. We don't have time. Look. She said, pointing out the window, just in time to see the man in the Torino pull off in haste, being harassed by the entire vampire family. The leader of them turned back at Shiloh, giving her a smile, and then jumped into his own truck to follow pursuit of his prey, as if he were baiting Shiloh to just try and follow him. He didn't have to. She was already on her way. Come on, Huck, they're gonna kill him! We have to save that guy! Shiloh said. Huck, still in shock, said nothing, but settled on agreement without saying a word. Shiloh's own truck sped after the lot of them, shortly thereafter. The three vehicles sped down back roads carelessly at high speeds. Shiloh's black pickup was slowly gaining on the older red one that she was chasing, but somehow the vampire's jalopy was able to keep pace with an old muscle car to gain on it, while effectively outrunning Shiloh's own vehicle, which had its engine bored out along with a few other modifications. She could only reason that beneath the old truck's rusted exterior resided some modifications of its own. Huck, take the wheel! Shiloh demanded. Huck expressed a confused look, but did as he was told. Still, he was more than shocked to see Shiloh lean out the driver's side window with a large shotgun and take aim. Shiloh, be careful! Huck yelled, having control of the wheel, but not the gas pedal or brakes. Shiloh heeded his warning, but did not visibly acknowledge his statement. Her focus was locked completely on the truck ahead. Just a little closer. Shiloh mumbled to herself. Within moments, all three cars approached a sharp turn. Shiloh took her shot and hit her target, blowing out the back driver's side tire with buckshot, causing the truck to skid and flop over end on end, landing in a small field off the side of the road. The Torino, however, was carrying too much momentum, and instead of taking the corner, the car simply slid off the side of the road as well turning more than 360 degrees and coming to rest in a deep ditch. Shiloh slammed her foot on the brake, leaned back inside the vehicle, and placed the truck in park. As she exited the vehicle, Huck followed suit. And as they did, Shiloh and Huck could see the whole vampire clan slowly start scurrying out of their overturned pickup like vermin. The man in the Torino desperately tried to start the engine over and over, but to no avail. His panicked attempts did, however, get the attention of the vampire clan, causing two of them to split off from the group and start moving towards the dark teal ford, the teenage boy and the grandmother. Huck froze momentarily, not knowing what to do upon seeing four monsters bearing sharp, fang-like teeth running towards him. He looked at Shiloh for reassurance, but she wasn't looking back at him nor was she shaken or paralyzed. Shiloh slowly and methodically reached back into the vehicle and retrieved something that looked like a large gun. She lifted the object to her face at eye level and took her shot before quickly reloading and taking another. It was a crossbow, and the resulting arrows hit their marks, the bolts embedding deep into the skulls of both twin children. The small vampires instantly burst into bright blue flames that entropied as quickly as they had burst into life. Before Shiloh could reload, however, the tall man vampire was at her throat, forcing Shiloh to take a step back before he could land a clawed hand. The mother figure beast lunged at Huck instead, who did not react as quickly as Shiloh being toppled to the ground. Glass could be heard being smashed in the adjacent distance, signaling that the other creatures had broken the windows on the Torino. A man's voice could be heard calling out for help. In one fluid motion, Shiloh ducked and dodged. She reached under the man's arm and gripped him by the shoulder instead, pushing him face first into the pickup, before the thing could even let out a grunt. Shiloh had plunged her silver-coated blade into the beast's back. However, Huck was on the ground, severely outmatched by the woman who was attacking him, who now held his throat in her hands, ready to pull back and rip it from his neck. But Shiloh saved him just before she could by throwing the knife into the back of her skull, causing her to burst into flames as well, just as soon as Huck had pushed the woman's body off of him. We gotta help that guy! Shiloh said to Huck, helping him to his feet. 
Huck was slow to stand, making sure to grab something up off the ground before he did, and in that time, Shiloh had made it to the Torino and surprised the grandmother from behind who was now leaning inside the driver's side window. She slit the beast's throat to get her attention, before stabbing her in the face once she turned around. Shiloh in that instant got a look at the man in the car. He was tall. His hair was light brown. He was rugged and handsome and seemed thoroughly scared out of his wits. It was this momentary lapse in focus that gave the teenage vampire his opportunity, grabbing Shiloh from behind by the throat. His clawed fingers squeezed, and Shiloh could feel his nails penetrate her skin. She could feel her neck and esophagus begin to stretch. This was it. In only a moment, she would be grasping for a throat that would no longer be connected to her neck, trying to catch the buckets of blood that fell from the wound. So when the creature spontaneously burst into flames and let go, Shiloh was shocked and confused. She turned to see what had happened, and as the flames died out, she saw beyond them. It was Huck, and he was still holding the crossbow at eye level, having loaded it with one of Shiloh's bolts soaked in holy water before firing it into the back of the teenage vampire, saving her life. They're real, Huck stammered. Yes, they are. It's not easy at first, but it gets easier. Yeah, but they're real. My brother wasn't crazy, Huck exclaimed. Shiloh nodded her head and smiled. I'm sorry. Who are you and what the hell just happened? Who were those people? Why were they after me? Shiloh turned to face the man who attacked her and Huck with a plethora of questions that he could barely process the answers for. Shiloh calmed him down and did her best to explain. After introducing herself and Huck, he did the same in kind, telling her that his name was Christian. Christian Beretta. The vampire clan that she'd been chasing for months was finally gone. And in that moment, her satisfaction of revenge, the conclusion of this chapter of her life, and even Huck's rejoicing ramblings, all escaped her. Instead, Shiloh couldn't help but stare into Christian's eyes as they talked. He was freaked out for sure, and she only had just met him. But she could tell already that there was a spark between them that just could not be denied. Well, family is a funny beast. Sometimes, when you kill off one, you might get a family of your own. And in this instance, I should have like 36 families by now. But don't forget to tune in again next Saturday for more gore galore. And until then, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so I can catch you all again next Saturday. <laughs>